Sometimes, all I want to feel is the cool breeze in my hair and the salty splash of the ocean on my face as my ship carves its way across the deep blue sea. But other times, I'd rather be chilling in a dark room with my endless collection of video games. Well, sometimes it's a game that's so chill, it lets you do both. And we'll find out if I can commit to the seafaring lifestyle when I complete The Legend of Zelda. The Phantom Hourglass. Here comes a new challenger! Yeah. Danger! Perfect. Oh, hey! I didn't see you there. Welcome the Completionist. We don't just beat the games, we complete them, man. I was just playing Phantom Hourglass while enjoying this delicious sandwich, since the game only requires one hand to play. In fact, the last time I played this game, it was just after high school and I was on a road trip and I wasn't driving. I don't condone that, but if I wanted to, I could have. Now with all the controls built around the use of the stylus, Phantom Hourglass is unlike any other Zelda game, including its direct predecessor, The Wind Waker. But I love Zelda, I love multitasking, so I finally decided to complete it. Eventually. I'll get there. It's so good. Look everyone, I could spend a bunch of time here recapping the whole Zelda series, but we all get it, right? There's a million games, most of them rule, and I'm never not gonna at least give a Zelda game a chance. Even the Zelda games that encounter controversy upon release usually turn out pretty great with the benefit of hindsight, like The Wind Waker for example. There is also a bit of controversy over Phantom Hourglass's stylus controls, but if it's anything like it was before, then people just need to chill out, man. It's got Zelda. It's got phantoms. It's got, um, hourglasses. What more could you want? And it's even a direct sequel to the masterpiece that is Wind Waker. So if you've been longing for more of Toon Link's adorable island hopping adventures, then you've come to the right place. The game picks up pretty much right after Wind Waker ends, with Link and his pirate pal Tetra sailing their way across the Great Sea on a journey of discovery. Unfortunately, what they discover is a ghost ship. And when Tetra gets in trouble while boarding it, Link goofs and falls into the ocean. He wakes up in a mysterious new land with a bunch of mysterious new islands covered in mysterious new stuff like the titular phantom hourglass. With the help of a mysterious old man named Oshis, Link sets off to find his friend in a ship belonging to Captain Linebeck, who isn't mysterious but is just kind of a selfish jerk and he only helps because he's promised treasure. But a ship is a ship and a crew is a crew, so it's time to explore a whole new batch of islands and temples. And exploring in this game actually feels kind of different different given the DS's two screen setup. You pretty much always have your map available to you, and a lot of the gameplay centers around navigation of one kind or another. You can even use the stylus to make notes on your treasure maps like a real ass pirate. In fact, you use that stylus for just about everything. You don't even control Link with the D-pad. Combat, movement, puzzles, it's all pretty much done with the tip of the stylus, which is why my left hand was free to do whatever I wanted. I got all my taxes done while playing this game. What other game can you say that about? And I know, I know, as the completionist, I should be fully committed to every game I play. But get off my back, man. This game is basically meant to be half-assed, or rather, half-handed. And that's actually where a little bit of the controversy over the game arose. While almost everyone was over the cartoon art style by this point, certain hardcore Zelda fans felt that Phantom Hourglass was too casual and didn't feel enough like a Zelda game. But then anytime so-called hardcore gamers freak out over a game being too accessible, they usually just need to do one thing. Chill out. If there's one thing I learned during my one-handed journey through Phantom Hourglass, it's that it's definitely the chillest Zelda game of all time. 
It's got the same Lazy Island vibe of Wind Waker, but without the world-ending Ganon-driven shenanigans that make that game more high stakes. In this one, you're just cruising around some islands, trying to rescue your friend from a ghost boat. Sure, you end up having to unite some ancient spirits or whatever, that's what we expect from a Zelda game at this point. Instead of a bunch of crazy temples though, this game has you mostly going back to one temple over and over, the Temple of the Ocean King. Now, while this could seem lazy, the Temple of the Ocean King is actually one of the coolest things about the game. There's a curse that drains your life, but thanks to that spooky hourglass we found, Link will be okay, as long as I can keep it full of sand. There are big buff boys called phantoms in this temple and your only choice at first is to hide from them so they don't take your sand like a bunch of bullies. These stealth sections are dope if you're into stealth sections, and if you're not, you'll eventually get the satisfaction of bopping those supposedly invincible dudes right in the face. This makes progressing and learning new skills satisfying because you get to go back to the big temple and kick its accursed butt more and more each time. I eventually got so good at smacking phantoms and running this temple that I was able to finish going through without spilling a single grain of sand from my hourglass. But a true man of the sea can only stay cooped up inside a temple for so long, no matter how much sand he or she has in their hourglass. So once you find the temple's hidden sea charts, you get to hop back in your boat to set off for the horizon. Much like in Wind Waker, the exploration of islands is a huge part of the game's appeal. And no, I don't mean the chain restaurant islands. Although you could theoretically eat a burger at islands with one hand while exploring the game's islands with the other. Unlike the restaurant, there's just something relaxing about the the open sea. There's an intoxicating freedom to pretty much any game where you get a boat of your own, especially when you see an island in the distance and think, yeah, I'm gonna go there. While exploring, I made sure to get all of the game's treasure maps, some of which are found in chests, some of which I had to dig for, and some of which were just given to me by super chill island folk. They were all worth seeking out though, because you never know what's lying at the bottom of the sea. In this case, it was mostly rupees, sand for my hourglass, and parts for Captain Limebeck's ship. But Link still has a friend to rescue and can't spend all day hunting for treasure and chilling on the beach, no matter how much he'd like to. This is a Zelda game, and there are, as always, puzzles to solve. Phantom Hourglass has a loopy DS-specific approach to many of its puzzles, encouraging the player to do things like blow into the microphone to turn a windmill. Did doing this make me feel ridiculous? Absolutely, but well, that's kind of the point. It's probably elements like this that had some Zelda fans rolling their eyes, but Zelda games in general have never been above leaning into Nintendo's gimmicks. Waving the Wiimote around? Hell yeah. Aiming by moving the switch around? Sure, let's not pretend we're too good for this stuff. Phantom Hourglass isn't a challenging or punishing Zelda experience by any means, but its main concern is kind of a breezy, low-key fun that's perfectly suited to Toon Link's switch to a handheld system. Sometimes you just gotta put your back to the winds, your eyes to the horizon, and your stylus to the screen. See, this game is so chill that I can work and play it at the same time. Everything's gonna be just fine. Just fine. Right? Now it's not something that I ever wanted to consider, but what if it's possible to be too chill? A lot of the great things in life require some kind of commitment, but the Phantom Hourglass doesn't even make you commit enough to use both hands. I mean, I could play two copies of this game at the same time if I wanted to. I don't, but like, I could. Because I love committing myself to games 100%, it's what this whole show is built around. And while I've got no problems with sailing around a magical fantasy land, hunting for treasure and saving the day, this this game's chillness can at times start to feel like a form of laziness, especially when it comes to completion. As a handheld Zelda game, it's obvious that this game is going to borrow some things from the handheld Zeldas of the past. And there's nothing really wrong with that. The foundation there is already strong. And while Phantom Hourglass leans into what made the 
the DS unique, it also seems comfortable with just sort of coasting at times. The choice to build the game around one central temple is a neat one structurally, but it does make the world feel smaller than it should. I didn't always feel compelled to explore when the game draws me back to the same place over and over. Same goes for the collectibles. There are these treasure maps, which I mentioned before, but also the old Zelda standbys like heart pieces, hiding in the usual sorts of places. Wind Waker balances its chill setting with real stakes and expansive world building, while Phantom Hourglass just sort of uses all that stuff without building on it as much as it could. Take my boat for instance, or rather, Captain Linebeck's boat. The captain is a reluctant ally and a fun character, but I never ended up with the same connection to him or his ship that Wind Waker built for that awesome little dragon boat. That guy rules. And while the Phantom Hourglass tries to develop a connection to the ship by letting you customize it with parts, the half-assed implementation of that idea ends up being the most frustrating part of the completion process. A lot of the ship pieces are subject to RNG, which means grinding, grinding, and more grinding if you want to get them all. And while I was enjoying leisurely wandering around this world, it's hard to keep enjoying that when everything else has been done and you're just indiscriminately murdering things so you can upgrade your ship. Getting all the ship parts actually ended up doubling the length of time it took me to complete the game. Grinding for those took as much time as it took to do literally everything else. And it's hard to stay chill at that point. Now I'm no stranger to grinding, but this is an element of the game that clearly wasn't designed with completion in mind. And I didn't want to get bored of Phantom Hourglass's world or its dope island vibes. But by the time I got all those ship pieces, I was over it, man. Donezo. So while I still think they need to chill out, some of the game's critics might have had a point about its casualness. Not because it appeals to casual gamers, which is a totally fine thing for a game to do, and not because of the stylus-based controls, which let me be clear, are very weird and get uncomfortable at times. But at least they allow me to shoot hoops or whatever I want while I was playing the game. No, the problem is that the game takes such a chill approach to being a Zelda game that it never hits the highs of some of the other games in the series. It's consistently pleasant but happy to coast by on its modest charms. I'm willing to put the effort in and grind until I've gotten everything there is to get, but it sometimes feels like the game itself is indifferent to those efforts. I'm sure we've all got friendships like that. Frazier, dude, I am playing Phantom Hourglass on my Nintendo DS with my right hand. With my left hand, I'm doing a whole lot of nothing. And right now, I'm gonna be doing all kinds of cool activities. The activity that I am choosing is to high five my best friend, Frazier. Give me some skin. Give me some skin, Frazier. It's gonna be so sick, dude. I'm right here. I'm so close. Frazier. 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 Ah! Yes. It's nice that I only had to play through Phantom Hourglass once, but once I'd spent 20 hours doing just about everything, I was doomed to yet another 20 something hours of just grinding away for randomly generated ship parts. And the worst part is, I was left with nothing to show for it. The game is very light on rewards, and your only compensation for getting all those parts is freedom to style your ship however you want. Cool, sure, but definitely not worth doubling the length of the goddamn game. It's like being a young and carefree sailor exploring the world, only to find out that your prize is spending eternity as a cursed and haunted ghost sailor, shackled to a life of piracy by the weight of all your past misdeeds. It's heavy stuff, man. While I cruised around Phantom Hourglass's waterlogged world of wonder, I collected 31 treasure maps, which led me to a whole bunch of money and sand, and felt like a vital part of exploring. There were 13 heart containers collected because it wouldn't be a Zelda game without them. I got all 72 parts for a ship that technically wasn't even mine because I'm just that chill of a bro. You freaking welcome, Captain Linebeck. And I played a total of 44 hours, a full 23 of which were spent grinding for those aforementioned ship pieces. Cool, man. Oh, man. You know, it feels so weird to have both my hands free again. I can do so much more stuff now, like, like clap or eat a bigger, better sandwich. Oh, yeah, that's a real two-hander. 
While I savored my time in the watery world of Wind Waker, I definitely feel like I worn out my welcome when it came to those ship pieces, right? But I had a real chill time pretty much doing everything else in this game. Hmm. Which is why I give Phantom Hourglass and this sandwich my completionist rating of finish it, man. Oh, I'm totally finishing this boy. Finish it! That's all the time I have today, guys. So, you know, if you like what you saw, do me a favor, hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. And if you're, if you're like chill, if you like the vibe here, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to get all the notifications. I do this like every Wednesday and Saturday, man. It's kind of crazy. Anyways, everyone on Patreon's cool. If you want to join us there, that'd be great too. I'll see you guys soon. Got to finish the sandwich first, dude. This is a big man. <laughs>